Amen. Let's pray together, you all. <clears throat> Lord, uh, what an honor and what a privilege it is to, uh, to serve these, your servants. God, we thank you for the privilege of serving you with our gifts and giving our lives to you in such a way that the things that we do, um, they echo into eternity. They impact way beyond our lifetime. So thank you for each and every person that's on this uh, Zoom call for those who will be watching the recording afterwards, uh, for those who have decided to be servants and uh, volunteers in your kingdom work. Uh, would you anoint this time tonight, God, that it would uh, let us see through your eyes how you see them? And would, would you help us see through your eyes, Jesus, uh, the rewards that you also have for them associated with their obedience to you? Thank you for this department, God, for its leadership. Thank you so much. Uh, for all of the individuals, God, who with pastoral care are helping literally to shepherd uh, the people of God at the Salem Baptist Church and beyond. Uh, would you get the glory tonight? Would you place some oil of your spirit and anointing uh, on this time as our prayer in Jesus' name? Amen and amen. So you all, as I said, uh, opening up, uh, it, it's really an honor uh, to be here with you all for several reasons. One is that uh, when I was at Salem, you all, uh, and many of you all may remember, uh, 8201 Jeffrey was the first building that we were in, and it was marked by uh, setting up and tearing down every week. Uh, it was a nursery uh, with little cots and little artwork on the walls, and every Sunday, uh, we had to convert that space from a literal nursery or preschool, whatever, into a church. Uh, chairs would be uh, brought from the balcony down to the main floor, set up in the, uh, the choir area, and then set up throughout the church. Uh, Pastor Meeks, along with the ushers, along with communion, along with the uh, counting team, would meet in a little small closet office uh, where he would change clothes and where they would uh, uh, get the communion together and get everything together. And after the service would be over, I'll never forget, it, it was a fun time for me. We get, we get to throw the chairs up to somebody in the balcony who could catch them and put them away. But every single week, in addition to parking, in addition to greeting, in addition to that, but in addition to the Sunday uh, uh, moments, there were people that were coming, they were losing people, uh, uh, and we had to shepherd them through that. And there were people that were being hospitalized and there were people that had all these other needs. And so you all, I had the privilege of watching a church driven by a volunteer spirit where it wasn't uh, a negative uh, ask to say, would you, you put this chair or would you do this or do the other? So you all, I, I get excited about servants. Um, I, I, I get excited about people who are committed uh, to help other people and to shepherd them by helping. So I wanna say to each and every one of you in whatever part that you play, and I know that there are a lot of different hats that the pastoral care department uh, has, whether it's parking, whether it's uh, those who are providing uh, a repass support or uh, caring for people that are in the hospital or making phone calls or reaching out to people uh, on, during special times in their lives and saying, we remember you. Each and every one of those things matters so much. Now, before I go to the scripture, let me just share this as well. Um, spiritual gifts are given by God. And I had this talk actually with the pastoral care department last time we shared about spiritual gifts and, 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 and talking about gifts versus fruit. But spiritual gifts are given as the Lord deems. Now, let me just say this. There are many pastors or preachers uh, who uh, are, do not have necessarily uh, a shepherding gift. Uh, and there's some who do have a shepherding gift. Uh, uh, there's a pastor who uh, really impacted me greatly by the name of Bill Hybels at Willow Creek Church uh, in, in, in Barrington. Uh, and I never forget meeting with him. And I said, uh, so you, you, you don't seem like you really want to be around the people like a lot after church and all that. He said, oh, no, I, 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 I don't want to be around the people after church. And I said, well, why wouldn't you want to do that? He said, because my, my, my primary gifts are teaching, uh, preaching, and leading, uh, and, 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 and not so much that. I said, well, I love people. I love people. Uh, and it's my heart to just uh, pray with them, be with them, all that. Do you all know this is a mega church, you all? It, it, it's mega church. 
I preached there three times that Sunday. After each sermon, Bill Heibel stood up and told his church that had 7,000 people in each service, any of you all that want to hug, any of y'all that want to uh, just have somebody just love on y'all, Pastor Kerry will be available down front for you. True story. Uh, I never left that church. I'm surprised I'm still not there right now. Um, the point is this. In an organization where gifts of shepherding um, need to be pronounced and seen, a department like this must exist. Um, because Salem, any church, but, but Salem particularly because of its size, have got to have people who see themselves in every facet of what you do as a shepherd of sorts, shepherding people through what, what do I do right now? Shepherding people, uh, how do I feel about this loss? How do I deal with my grief? How do I deal with my illness that I've got to now walk with? How do I deal with, I'm not familiar with this place. And so each of you, whether you know it or not, uh, whether you have the specific gift of shepherding, you are under a, a ministry and under an anointing that actually allows you to be a shepherding arm of the ministry of Salem Baptist Church of Chicago. So I pray that you all would see yourself a little bit more in that light, uh, that you're not just doing things or doing tasks, this is what they asked me to do, but that you're actually shepherding, covering, walking, caring for people uh, in this journey. So I wanna share my screen <coughs> with you guys and oh, if I can maybe get permission to do that on my end, that would be fantastic if I could. All right. And I want to share um, this particular scripture with you all. Okay, that's not, oh, there it goes. All right, wonderful. And so this is from Matthew's gospel, y'all. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. I know that you all had a, another scripture that you kind of had as a theme and focus, but I really just felt strongly led to, 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 to lean into Matthew 25, 31 through 46. Now, you all, whenever you see the words in red, you know that this is our Lord and Savior, Jesus, that is speaking, and uh, Jesus is doing the, the, the communicating. And so I want you to notice some things. Uh, I want you to look, li listen for some things. I want you to listen to what is he saying about salvation? What is he saying about people who will go to heaven and who will not? And what are the things that he's saying that those people who will go to heaven uh, will be marked by. So let me say, so when, and when I read through this, I want y'all to kind of be listening for a few things. What is he saying about heaven, right? What is he saying about heaven? What is he saying about the people who uh, will go to heaven or who will not? Uh, and what is he saying about the things that those people will be doing that will be a marker of them going to heaven? So I just want to kind of, kind of have your ears tuned to that as you as you look through this scripture with us, all right? So Matthew 25, beginning at verse 31, I'm in the NIV, it says, when the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? Uh, when did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. 
I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also answered, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. You all, I, I wanna be clear uh, uh, as I open this, that there is no works associated with salvation, all right? So I don't want us to go through this text and say, oh, wow, wait a minute. Are you saying that if, if, if you do these things, then that earns me a space in heaven? Or if I don't do those things, then it uh, earns me a space in hell? No, no, we, we, we know as Christians that we're not saved by works. There's nothing that humanity can do that can earn eternal life with God. It is a gift of God. The Bible says, uh, lest anybody could boast about their work. However, you all have heard this state statement many times that you do know a tree by the fruit that it bears, right? You can, you can know whether a person has been converted, transformed. Uh, uh, God has done something in his or her life by the way in which they lead and live their life. So Jesus, as he's talking now, he's giving almost a uh, 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 an idea, kind of lifting the hood and examining what does it look like for those who are called followers of Jesus, those who are called Christians, what does it look like for them to be uh, shepherds? What does it look like uh, for them to be those who would do what he did as he walked the earth and represent him long after he is gone? Uh, and so he opens up and says, but in verse 31, it says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. Boy, we look for that moment, right? When we see Jesus uh, reigning and ruling, uh, sitting on the throne, all the nations will be gathered before him. And, and, and when that comes, y'all, there will come a time when all of humanity, both present, past, future, all will, will stand before the throne of judgment, right? And we will be, uh, uh, judged for what we did, not, not to enter into heaven by what we did, but we will be judged for what we did while we were on the earth, right? And so it says that while uh, he's sitting on the throne, all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And so you all, in a sheepfold, the goats would kind of mingle in, and, and when it came time for there to be a demarcation, the shepherd, the good shepherd, would make sure that the goats are separated from the sheepfold. And so he gives this illustration, because it's so common for the people of that day, that when he sits on the throne, and every nation of the world is coming before him, he He's going to separate the people, separate people one from another. God is going to distinguish one group of people over and against another group of people and separate the sheep from the goats. And it says in verse 33, he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Uh, and then Jesus, the king, will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed of my father. Take your inheritance. The kingdom is prepared for you since the creation of the world. And you all, that's the joy that all of us have, that one day he'll say, well done. I come into your rest and come on into the, to glory. All of us look for that. But I don't think all of us look for the things that were associated with that. Uh, all of us want to hear the Lord say, come on in. Uh, I got a mansion prepared for you. I got a place prepared for you, not made by hands, a building not made by hands. All of us want to hear that uh, from the Lord, but, but we don't always think about what he's getting ready to say next. And as I go through what he's getting ready to say next, pastoral care team, as volunteers, I want you to see yourself in this text. I want you, and I'm going to, and I'm, I'm going to kind of extract some things along the way, as I got a chance to look at your flyer and look at all the things that you do and show you all prayerfully in this text, how each of you uh, are doing what this text says. Now, listen, you all, if you think your work is insignificant, if you think that all, all I'm doing is sending out a card, 
All I'm doing is, is parking the car director. All I'm doing is making a call when somebody is sick. I mean, I, that wasn't a big deal. I'm not developing a sermon. I'm not uh, figuring out, you know, what's going to happen on the stage or, or what's going to happen on the screen. Uh, I'm not that important. I want you to know that Jesus views every single thing that you as a volunteer are doing as significant. Nobody else may see it. As a matter of fact, for most of you all, you're not doing it for anybody to see it. But let me tell you something, even though it may not be viewed by many people as significant, because people view people on the stage and people that people can see as significant. God sees you. And this text is exciting to me because Jesus calls the role. <laughs> Jesus goes down point by point and says to these people, let me tell you the kind of sheep, the kind of righteous, the kind of people that I, Jesus, take notice of. And as I go through the list, I want you to see whether or not you can see your department or see the area in which you're serving as a part of what this might be. All right, look what he says here. Verse uh, 35, he says, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. Uh, uh, you all, when you feed someone in any capacity, now listen, folk love to eat now, I want you to know that. When you feed somebody in any capacity in the name of the Lord, and I think when we see stuff like hungry, we think homeless or we think stuff. No, no, hungry just means I'm hungry. Uh, that means I just uh, buried my loved one and I'm, 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 I'm depleted. I'm hungry. So a repass is feeding the hungry. Uh, uh, I just left work and I've been at work all day and we got something happening. Uh, and you all have provided some refreshments for me uh, and you've done it in a beautiful way. I was hungry. Uh, I could be destitute. I could be homeless and my hunger could be at another level. But, but he did not qualify uh, what hunger was. He just said, when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. And guess what? Also, when I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. So any of you that in your job descriptions and volunteer work, you are providing food and you are providing liquid to <laughs> anybody to eat or drink, this is you. This is you. For when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. And you all, I promise you, this past Sunday, uh, it was first time back in the building at the pandemic, a lot of stuff, you know, we, we, we're not the mega church Salem is, but we, we have a great church. And so I'm like, oh man, it's the first Mother's Day that I did not remember to talk to somebody about what we're going to do for the mothers. I and mean, what are we going to do? We used to give them little flowers or something. That's always, you know, the I used to, by the way, my mom would home be the Lord. What a depressing thing. You get the white flower, other people get the red flower. I don't like that. Let's just not do that thing, you know. Uh, but the bottom line is we didn't have anything planned. And then I saw on the screen muffins for mom. <laughs> Muffins for moms. So after the service, they got up and said, the person getting the announcement said, after the service, we just want to say to all the moms, we've got some muffins for moms in the hallway. Nothing elaborate, you all. They went to Sam's Club probably and bought some muffins and they had some other snacks and some juice. But guess what? People were hungry. People were thirsty. And somebody took the time to intentionally and lovingly and with excellence prepare something for someone in the name of the Lord. Uh, this is what Jesus says when I when when I when I when I sit on the throne and, and I uh and I and I begin to call the people to me that have done the good things that, that I've uh, uh said that they've done. Uh he said, I'm gonna call specifically the people who took care of the hungry and took care of the thirsty. But then he says, I was a stranger and you invited me in. Since when in the world would God in his foresight be in the, the dusty hills of Judea and the dusty hills of Israel uh, and then see all the way to the parking lot uh, at the House of Hope? When, 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 what, what an amazing savior that could, could be in the, the rustic uh, uh, scenery of, uh, of where he lived and see all the way into the future and see somebody who had never walked into a church a day in their life. And for the first time, they're a stranger coming to this strange place where people tell me, hallelujah, glory, coming into that place. And they are just, they still got weed on them. They still got alcohol in them. They are just like never. Been, and they are a stranger. And guess what? You 
you invited me in. Not the person, not the person on the stage because they didn't see me. Not the person singing because they didn't see me. You, by the way you looked, by the demeanor that you had, by the smile on your face, you welcomed me in. You all, I pray that any of you all that are in the welcoming departments, I mean, and that might not be your official title, it may be parking, it may be green, but, but if you are the first line of defense, of the ministry for people that are coming, guess what? You are one of the people that Jesus is speaking about in this text. He says, when I was a stranger, you invited me in. You are, I don't know, have you ever been in a situation where you were a stranger, right? It meant the world when someone showed you kindness, so it didn't make you feel so strange. Whether y'all know it or not, now hear me well now, this is my, this is my, y'all, this is my church, Salem, my church. Salem is strange. Strange, strange. Don't don't get your saved eyes and your saved ears out of the picture and be somebody who's never been to church a day in your life. And you come in and people are just, you know, just 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 uh doing stuff and doing dances. You know, every time somebody say something, they do a move with the dance and uh and the angels bow before them, every head going down, and uh, heaven and earth and everybody doing this. If you don't know what that means, you have walked into an ins insane asylum an insane asylum until somebody lovingly invites you in and says you know what give it a chance give it a minute it gets a little bit better listen you all unsaved people don't know this church culture that we have unsaved people on that come on, open your mouth open your mouth and give him praise they don't know what that means what, what, what you know i don't know what that means we just assume that everybody knows all these things we know you all the evangelistic call of Salem, the evangelistic call on God's church, especially in this hour, will bring more and more people that are completely unchurched. Hear what I'm saying to you, completely unchurched. Not, not you know, I've been to church with my mama or my granny on Easter. I never stepped foot <coughs> a day in my life. And guess what? How you respond to her, how you respond to him will be the determining factor whether or not they want to move a step further into that building. Because your your demeanor, your smile, your welcome, your uh, oh no, don't worry about that. Uh, will will set them right and, and make them feel at home. When I was a stranger, verse thirty five, you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. You all, you have different ministries and and outreaches that supply 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 support for people who are who need clothing and who need the the basic essentials of life, and you do that with uh, with, with honor, uh, not announcing it, not hey somebody who ain't got no clothes, no no, I mean with respect and doing it well. Uh, and let me just say to you all, uh, and I can I, I don't I I can't speak for the leadership of this department, but I know one thing. Um, why not? dream about how God can use you to take your area to the next level, whatever that, that is. You all, you, we're always waiting on when is Pastor Vet going to tell us what we need to do next? And when is the team going to let me know what I want to do? Listen, and, and you should ask that question. But can I tell you this? I submit and I suggest that you figure out, wait a minute, um, the, the need for clothes is increasing. Uh, and I really would like to some nice stuff. Let me go to Macy's. Let me go to Saks and say, hey, listen, I'm, I'm coming on behalf of uh, Salem Baptist Church of Chicago. And I'm wondering, do you all ever have clothes that you all discard? Uh, oh, every year we do. We usually don't, we don't know where to send them. And we didn't know that, oh my goodness. Well, would you be willing to donate those so that we get some new, brand new items? I, I'm just saying, I just need you to not always wait for the instruction of the person over you to give you creative and innovative ideas in the particular area in which you have been called. Because guess what? Pastoral care is a huge umbrella. It's a huge umbrella. And there are a lot of different facets to it. And so my, my prayer for you, volunteer, is that you would see yourself as a leader in your own servant department, in your own niche, in your own area of the kingdom, that you would see yourself as someone that God would say, wait a minute now, how can I help more people get clothes? How can I help more people who uh, who need to be clothed with honor, be clothed with honor as well? And so I pray that you all will be mindful that Jesus sees those of you 
They're involved with helping people who do not have the basic necessities of life like clothes and shoes and undergarments that you're helping them with respect and with honor. And if you can't do it, you're referring them to places that can, again, with respect and with honor. This is what Jesus is saying. Look, at, I was sick. And what did he say? You looked after me. You looked after me. You all, many of you know my testimony of having been in hospice and, uh, and actually uh, uh, a member of Salem. And I did not know it until I ended up coming back to Salem that Sunday that I came back that the nurse that was my attending nurse while I was in hospice was a member of Salem. But because of the, uh, the, the, HIPAA, what is it, the HIPAA agreement, whatever, she could not let me know who she was. Uh, I said, I don't think I'm gonna make it. I would tell her, she said, something is telling me you're gonna make it, sir. Something is telling me you're gonna make it. And next thing you know, I looked up on the Sunday that I came back to Salem, I saw her, she said, I've been a member here for years, Pastor. And she said, uh, God just allowed me, and I'm so grateful to, uh, to hold and anoint you and to walk with you while you were sick. I didn't know that this nurse was from Salem, but she, she was. The bottom line, when people are sick, it means the world when someone just comes to look after them. Can't make me feel better. You don't have the power of healing necessarily. You may, but I know one thing, coming to look after me. Uh, as the old folk would say, come in to see about me, right? It means the world. It means the world, you all. And for every one of you that make that phone call, uh, do that visit, it means the world. Family members are, are able to one minute go in the kitchen for a second because somebody else is caring for mom. Uh, I can I can just for a second breathe and exhale and air because somebody else is praying with with dad. And so you, I just want you to know that when you uh, care and look after those who are sick. Jesus says, I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Um, uh, I, I, I'm a part of prison fellowship and I do some teaching and, and some work with, with, with various prisons here in the metro Detroit area. Uh, and, and you all, it, it just breaks my heart how many people uh, have been thrown away into the penal system. and. And what what it means for somebody to get a a letter? Or, I mean, you you all you have no listen. When when I'm going, I'm just going there to speak. And every time they ching ching them doors behind me, it's just sobering to realize that I'm gonna leave in a few minutes. But this is where they will be, many of them for years. And you know what it means to get a phone call? I mean, get a get a letter, or get a visit, or to get a Bible or to get a care package or anything, or any kind of communication from the outside world. Uh, many of their own families have abandoned them. He says, when I was a prisoner, you, you know what you did? You came to visit me. And listen, prison doesn't always mean bars and a cell. Uh, sometimes people can be in prison and in domestic violence and domestic abuse. They can be in prison with mental illness and emotion. They can be in all kinds of prisons, but guess what? Instead of just saying, oh, what a sad condition, you came and you visited me. You Listen, you couldn't remove me out of my prison, but you came to be with me in it. You could not change my, my imprisoned status, but you did change how I felt about being in my prison. And for every one of you that are dealing with people that have addictions and dealing with people that are uh, that are imprisoned by these various things that have caused them to be afraid to go home because they're going to get beaten by a spouse or beaten by, you know, a loved one. You know, you are providing that that visitation uh, that Jesus talked about uh, for those who are in prison. And so you are, I, I just encourage you as you're going through this, are you seeing how your particular area of service and volunteering may resonate with this. Maybe not, you know, point for point, but like, wait a minute, when I when I write this note or I write this card, wow, that that's me visiting. When I, when I write this note or I write this card or I make this phone call, that's me coming to see about them, right? Uh, see that as as this act, all right. So look, notice what happens uh, 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 in this next text. Then the righteous, these are the ones, remember the Bible says that he separates the righteous from the unrighteous, the, the, the sheep from the goats, all right? So, he, so now that he's separated them, he's now saying to them, let me tell you why I've separated you. And then he goes through the list we just went through. And look at 37, the righteous, right, the ones that were the sheep, they will answer him, uh, Lord, 
uh, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? Now, listen, big question. You know why? Every one of y'all that are listening, <clears throat> I'm going to be a prophet. If Jesus showed up in the Jesus mobile, and he came in the parking lot at, at the house. As a matter of fact, he just came in on chariots of fire. He just came in on chariots of fire. He's he's coming in. Oh, wow. It, fires you know he comes in he parks and y'all direct the chariot of fire to a parking space and he comes in and he don't know nothing about where to go the way that you that we would treat jesus right uh, jesus uh, hey, come over here please over here yeah, jesus is coming would y'all please jesus come on now come on and we we do whatever we could right because jesus is in front of us jesus is getting this letter jesus wait a minute y'all i'm hold on one second everybody be quiet i'm calling jesus right uh, i'm making i mean i gotta just call for jesus uh hold on one second i gotta go i uh, get these clothes for jesus uh when you decide these are clothes for jesus your the type of clothes start mattering oh no 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 no. we're not putting that on jesus no 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 jesus not gonna have that on well i'm putting that on jesus wait we're not feeding that to jesus who jesus would not eat that i wouldn't eat that so i know jesus would eat that so so they they're saying to themselves and righteously so when did we see you jesus uh in all of these situations because no one thing have we seen you jesus we would be all in on everything on that list because we want to make sure jesus that when you was in prison we came and we came on a regular we were matter of fact we might even do something and get up in there i mean i, I don't know i don't want to do nothing illegal but if i can just be close to jesus i i'll be doing it. so bottom line every example in the text they ask the question when did we see you jesus do this look what it says in verse 40 the king will reply truly i tell you whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine you did for me now you i need i need these words to really resonate because this this changed my whole life when it came to um ministering to people he didn't say you're doing this on my behalf look what he says in verse 40 the king will reply truly i tell you whatever you did whatever you did whatever you're doing pastoral care team whatever you are doing listen to one of the least of these brothers and sisters who belong to me you did that for me not on behalf of me not in my name you did it for me I wonder, as, as in this training, how will that shift your burnout when you realize you've been doing it for him? I wonder how will that shift your, you know what, I can't take this no more. I've been working with these Negroes all this time on my head hurt. I'm getting old, I got corns on my feet. Uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm just not as young as I used to be and, and I don't know if I can keep going. How many of those things are driving your uh decision maybe to say i don't know if i can continue in the way that i have been continuing he says listen what you do to them you do for me and you all as you as you hear this i'm wondering and, and I, i'm, I'm going to speak by the spirit um do not allow the enemy to steal your eternal reward because you are fatigued serving Jesus. Can I can say that again? Don't let the enemy of God steal your eternal reward because you are tired of serving Jesus. You all, I rarely get tired of serving Jesus. I get tired of people. Now, if I, listen, if I can begin to see people the way Jesus sees people, 
then I will stop getting tired of the people that he is not tired of. Can I tell you something? This is a James Meeks book I'm from. I'm a people. <laughs> I'm a people. And if Jesus doesn't get tired of me, then what right do I have to get tired of his people? He said, what you are doing to the least of these. And you all, I believe that there are some people who are the least of the brothers and sisters. That means these are special people. Can I tell y'all something, um, pastoral care department? Some of y'all encounter some special people. All right. Now, listen, I'm not going to go into detail about what special people are, but these are the people where your where your grace is tried every time you encounter them. These are the people that the measure of God's anointing must increase exponentially to have any interaction with these people. These are the people that every week ask the same question over and over again, every week, every week. So where's the bathroom at? Which way do I go? Uh, the same place it's been for the past 10 years, right over there. You don't want to say that, but that's in your head, right? Because you know why? Least of these, least of these, least of these. Why get irritated by the least of these? They're the least of these for a reason, because they're the least of these. And, and Jesus says, I need you to see the least of them the most difficult of them, the most uh, marginalized of them. I need you to see them as me. So here's the question. What's your most challenging role in your current volunteer position? Uh, it may be your fatigue and your tiredness, and I pray in Jesus' name he'll give you a second win. But I submit that most times it's just dealing with folks, right? It's dealing with people, Jesus. And he says, if you can have enough to care for the least of these, you are caring and you are doing this for me. Um, verse 41, then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into it, the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Why? I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, you did not look after me. So he goes down the same list, but he kind of adds the, the negated term in the middle of it. He said, now all the other things that they did, you didn't do it. 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 And then he says, uh, in, in verse 44, they responded, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? Because again, these unrighteous people, now I'm going to tell you something about the unrighteous. The unrighteous will always have a reason about what they would do if they could, if, if it could be different. Uh, God knows their hearts and God knows that them jokers, uh, it wouldn't have mattered if it was Jesus. They wouldn't have done it for him directly because guess what? He was with them <laughs> at that moment and many of them were rejecting him. But but they said, when did we see you, Jesus, in all them situations? Because uh, had we done it, we would have we done something different. We would have gave you something. We may not have gave, we let everybody else starve, but we wouldn't let you starve. <laughs> you know, Jesus knew their hearts and he says, um, truly, verse 45, truly I tell you, Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Let me just say this, volunteers. I want to end this last scripture, and then I want to open up some Q&A. Unlike a lot of other departments where there's rehearsals for singing, where there is maybe finding the new technology and how we can be trained and tweaked on the newest way to communicate the gospel through technology. Unlike another department of the church that may be looking at uh, ways in which, you know, we can communicate the gospel in a different way and proclaim, you know, through teaching and discipleship and preaching and going to school. What is the what is the what is the volunteer who is tasked with serving? How does that volunteer train him or herself? What 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 is your training course? Um, can I, and you know what's so awesome? It, here's the answer. You're doing this to Jesus. 
you're doing it to Jesus. If Jesus was having someone, if Jesus was in the hospital, how would you treat Jesus? What would you do? To, what would you do to see about Jesus in the hospital? If Jesus was struggling with some, and I know theologically, Jesus ain't, Jesus ain't gonna struggle. If Jesus was in a situation where he was in prison, how would you volunteer? Listen, come up with creative and innovative ways to get to Jesus. Because the penal system said, well, you can't do that, you can't do that. Oh, no, that's okay, I'm gonna get to Jesus. I'm gonna be like the people who I uh, had to get my friend, to G they tore up the roof. Uh, I'll tear up the roof of systems that won't allow us to get to the in prison. I'm gonna get to Jesus and make sure I can see about it. Listen, you all, I'm praying that a spirit of innovation and a spirit of ingenuity and a spirit of excitement will come on you in your department. Yes, over parking. Yes, yes, over parking. That, that it does not need to be, oh, well, you know, all I'm doing is just directing people. To, no, you're inviting the stranger. That's not all you're doing. I'm out of here. If I encounter an attitude in the parking lot, I'm sure not about to go up in that house of whatever. Right? And so what about the innovation? I mean, what about some creative ways about a tire? What about some creative ways about how we are going to look and what we're going to wear and what we're going to what we're going to be doing? Are we going to do some dance? I mean, I, are we going to go TikTok and have a, 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 a viral video of how we are like in the parking lot and we're doing like synchronized stuff with the with the car? You know, I don't know. I know. I'm, I'm old, but why not? Why not? Why not? Why do we have to wait for someone else to give us an idea about how to make a uh, card writing and phone calling and repass doing and visitations more exciting more innovative more ingenious because you all guess what that is what god has called you to do in this hour and in this season so my prayer you all is just like they rehearse for singing songs for the choir just like the preachers and teachers prepare their messages just like the tech people are pre pre preparing their technology just like the maintenance people are cleaning the building i'm saying that as pastoral care you need to always be innovating always figuring out what new way can i serve what new way can i get clothes what new way can i get food what new way can i prepare food what new way can i greet what new way can i welcome somebody when they come in what new way can i make sure that we celebrate a birthday what new way can we make sure that we celebrate an anniversary what new innovative fill with life way can we make sure that we are meeting jesus's need lastly he says after he says in verse 46, then they will go away to eternal punishment, those who did not do it. But what it says, but the righteous to eternal life. I end with this because I think it's important. Jesus never wants us to equate eternity and salvation with works. We are not saved by works. We are saved by grace. The scripture is clear on it. However, once you get saved, you work. Not saved by work, but defined by work. <laughs> How you work, the way you work, and what you bring to your work speaks of your salvation. Doesn't make you saved, but it speaks about it. So here's my question finally. How is Jesus looking at how you're treating him by what your role is in pastoral care? That's the question. How, how is Jesus viewing you treating him? You all, do you think, and I'm, I'm done. This is, this, you know, I, I'm Baptist by background. You know, we have multiple closes. So this is my second close. Uh, do you all always think that every day I'm like, oh, I can't wait to preach. Oh my goodness, it's a, it's a day to, I cannot wait to preach. Preaching, yay, preaching, 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 preaching. You all, there are times I got gas. There are times that uh, my, my I'm married. I've been married a long time. There are times that you know got some stuff going on there. I got a daughter. You know, I got I got you know I'm get I'm 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 56. I'm not as young as I used to be. That there, there are things that are kind of like aching that I didn't, didn't know exist. Do you think that every day I'm like, oh man, I get to preach? But sometimes, sometimes it costs a lot. 
it costs a lot. And I, I don't want to get emotional, but I'm going to get emotional for a minute because I'm, I'm, I need you to hear this. And Yvette knows this because she and I are friends. Many of you may know I've struggled with depression a long time. I mean, that's been a, a, a spirit that has haunted me and tried to take me out. To God be the glory, I'm, I'm getting so much better. What pushes me through, volunteers, is I remember the Jesus that saved me. I remember the Jesus that turned my life around, that, that loved me when I didn't love me. And that set me up in life in ways that I couldn't have even imagined. And so, do I do, have I wanted to quit? Oh my gosh. Have I wanted, have I just been too tired of people, not of Jesus, but of people that I'm like, you know what? I don't wanna, I, I ain't gotta deal with this. But for the sake of Jesus, I give it my all every time. It may not be what somebody else can do. They may do better, but I give it my all. And I just want to say to each and every one of you, you're not going to heaven based on what you're doing. But when you go to heaven, what you're doing will be spoken of. How you did it will be spoken of. And I want to know that when I stand before him, he can give a specific list of things to say well done to. Well done when you wanted to give up but didn't. Well done when the people that you were serving were hurting you. Well done when it seemed like you were just getting a, a, a scoop in an ocean and trying to scoop the, the water out the ocean and make a difference and you're wondering, is there any difference being made at all? Well done. You were faithful over the little thing I gave you and now come on up and enter into your kingdom and enter into your rest because now you'll be rule over much. And so volunteers, as you ask the questions you wanna ask, I just wanna to say to you, you're my heroes. I mean that because you're the behind the scenes. You're not on the stage, you're not in the lights. You're not the person, oh, that's so-and-so. You're the one when people are at their worst. You're the one when people are at their most vulnerable. You're the one when people don't know anybody. You are the ones. And for some of you all that have already decided, like, I don't know if I'm going to keep going. Some of y'all have drafting things already. You ain't put send on the email yet. I want you to rethink. Are you doing it for the people that have hurt you? Are you doing it for the people that don't see it, don't recognize it? Are you doing it for the Jesus that does? And in Jesus' name, go forward in his power and his presence and know that God is calling you to innovate. And part of your boredom is that you're waiting for other people to give you innovation. Innovate, innovate. Be the most amazing food person on the planet. Have the Food Network come in and be like, listen, you all, we are here at the Salem Baptist Church because we've never seen repast done this way. I mean, why not? Why not? I mean, I'm serious. Y'all think I'm being crazy, but why not? Why not? So it's just a thought. You all love you. I hope this made sense and praise God. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. And then after that prayer, I wanna open up for question and answer. And for those that are watching by way of video, let me just say to you, thank you. I know that you weren't able to make it in real time, but it's just as important that you're watching uh, this, this video now. And our prayer for you is that maybe some of the questions that they're answering, you won't be able to answer in this moment in space, but boy, do you matter to God. Boy, do, boy, does your showing up mean something to Jesus. And I pray that you would not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, you will reap if you faint not. You don't know when due season is. So don't be upset that due season hasn't happened because you don't know when due season is. But in due season, you will reap if you faint not. Let's pray. Father, thank you for every volunteer on this call. Thank you for the pastoral care department. What a gift they are to the kingdom. What a gift they are to the Salem church. God, I pray that you would meet every one of these leaders, every one of these, your servants, in the way in which they need to be met. 
For those that are fatigued, would you endow with supernatural strength? For those, God, that are overwhelmed with the issues of their own life, <coughs> would you be the lifter of their head? Would you be the alleviator of some of the weight that they're carrying so that they can do uh, the things that you call them to do? For those who feel like I'm getting old and I don't know my relevance, let them know that there is no age limit with you. For those who feel like maybe I don't have the kind of education that somebody else has, let them know that you're not, uh, you, you, there's nothing in this these verses that have anything to do about degrees. So God, I pray that every single person would realize that each of them has the ability to innovate and be creative in the areas of volunteerism whether it's from parking, whether it is from writing letters or sending out emails, or whether it's from preparing repasts or being with grieving families or reading resolutions or being at the hospitals or being in prison or providing clothes or providing uh, resources. God, we pray that every person in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus would feel refreshed and renewed and empowered, Lord, because they're doing all of these things for you. And so we pray, God, that it would be acceptable in your sight, our God, our Lord, and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen.